This is Brother Peter Diamond, VaticanCatholic.com. I recently read a book called The Eternal Happiness of the Saints by St. Robert Bellarmine. I wanted to discuss some of the interesting quotes that can be found in this book. On pages 129 and 130 of The Eternal Happiness of the Saints, published by St. Athanasius Press, there's an excellent quote against Protestantism. St. Robert Bellarmine, referring to Protestants, he says, quote, But the heretics of our own time have endeavored to enter by another way, for they have taken away those narrow barriers, which relate not so much to the understanding as to action. The Christian faith teaches that all sins are to be avoided, that we shall have to give an account of even every idle word, that the kingdom of heaven can be acquired by good works as a crown of justice and a reward of labor, that celibacy is to be observed by priests. And he gives some other examples, and he says, These and other points which make the gate narrow, the heretics have so taken away as to make it very wide. For they assert that faith alone is necessary for salvation, so that a Christian could not perish, though covered with every sin, provided only he believed. And he lists some of the other false doctrines of the Protestants, and he says, these and other doctrines of faith being taken away, the heretics made the gate of salvation very wide for themselves, but they opened a way that leads to destruction, and through it they brought to perdition together with themselves an immense multitude of foolish men. End quote. I thought that quote was interesting because he clearly says that people who adhere to Protestantism are heretics. This is a truth that's denied by almost all people today who claim to be Catholic apologists. Some of them will say that Protestantism is heresy, but they will not say that people who adhere to Protestant heresies are heretics. Obviously, the Catholic faith teaches otherwise. And someone who would say that an individual who adheres to Protestantism is not a heretic is not a Catholic. Another interesting quote in this work comes on pages 100 and 101. St. Robert Bellarmine quotes a vision of St. Teresa of Avila, a vision she had of purgatory. St. Teresa mentions in her life having seen in purgatory the souls of many persons of remarkable virtue, some in a secular, others in a religious state, of her own nunnery and of several other orders. And she says, But amongst all the souls I have seen, I have not known any one to have escaped purgatory except three, Father Peter of Alcantara, Father Peter Ivagnes, a religious man of the order of St. Dominic, and a Carmelite friar. End quote. Another interesting quote comes on page 50 concerning how wicked men always oppose those who are doing good things for souls and promoting the truth. St. Robert Bellarmine says, quote, Affliction is everywhere to be found, everywhere to be met with, at home, on a journey, in the forum. For in all places the wicked oppress the good. End quote. And we see this often in the inexplicable and irrational opposition that so many people out there have to the truth. It doesn't make any sense. They resist clear logical argumentation, but for some reason they just oppose the truth and people who promote it. It's because they're wicked. Another interesting quote comes on page 128. It concerns faith. He says, quote, The Christian faith proposes many things to be believed, which are so beyond all understanding, that it is most difficult to give our consent to them, and yet we are commanded to believe them so firmly that we should be prepared, if necessary, to die a thousand times rather than deny one article of faith. End quote. This is relevant to the dogma outside the church there is no salvation which many people do not accept because they lack the supernatural grace of faith. St. Robert Bellarmine has pointed out that it's our duty to firmly believe things that are beyond our understanding. It's also interesting that in this work he enunciates the truth that no man is saved without water baptism. As we've pointed out in the past, it's the universal and constant teaching of Catholic theologians and doctors of the Church that no man can be saved without the sacrament of baptism, without actual water baptism. Even if not all of those people always remain consistent with that affirmation, but all of them affirmed that truth. There are two examples of that in this work. On page 133, St. Robert Bellarmine says, quote, 
But Christian hope teaches us that everyone, provided he be baptized in Christ and observe his commandments, will have the spirit of adoption from God. End quote. That's the universal and constant affirmation. Another example of it comes on page 75. He says, quote, For all those enter from the four quarters of the globe, who being baptized in the name of the three divine persons, have persevered in the end in faith, hope, and charity. End quote. It's noteworthy that on page 234, St. Robert Bellarmine describes and defines the church as, quote, nothing more than an assembly of the faithful, end quote. That's another example of how the church is composed only of the faithful and only the water baptized are part of the faithful. On page 93, there's an interesting quote relating to how the Christians are the new people of God, the true Israelites. That's relevant to this heretical idea, which is prevalent in evangelical Protestant circles, that the Jews are still the chosen people of God and that they still have a right to the promised land, etc. He says, quote, Thus St. Augustine clearly proves that Christians are true Israelites, not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, and that thereby they are heirs of the land of promise, which is in heaven. Wherefore the gates of the heavenly Jerusalem have inscribed on them the names of the twelve tribes of Israel, because the gate by which we enter the land of promise is the inheritance of the sons of God, who alone are true and sincere Christians, the children of the blessed apostles. End quote. This truth is also taught in Galatians 6.16, where it is indicated that the church is the Israel of God. In this book, he speaks about the joys of heaven, the fewness of the saved, and how the gate to heaven is narrow. But he also points out that for those who truly want to go to heaven, it's not that difficult for those who are sincere, who believe the truth, and want to do the right thing. On page 145, he says, quote, The gate which on one side appears most narrow on account of the perfection of virtue required, on the other is very wide and easy to enter, by reason of the omnipotence, truth, and mercy of God, if we be truly desirous of entering it." End quote. On page 164, there's an interesting quote which provides quite a contrast to ideas of modern liberalism, and he's speaking of Judgment Day, and he says, quote, "...we shall also see with feelings of pleasure the crimes and torments of the damned." in which the sanctity of the good and the justice of God will wonderfully shine forth. For then the just will wash their hands in the blood of the wicked, as the prophet says. So he's saying that the just will feel pleasure that the wicked and the damned are receiving the punishment they deserve. That's how the just will feel when they see things truly as they are. Those are a few of the interesting quotes in St. Robert Bellarmine's work on the eternal happiness of the saints.